Open Source TV. And uh, with us today at the 2007 Utah Open Source Conference is Clint Savage, the man, the brains, the organization, <laughs> how to uh, behind this first well, ever. We're here on the very last day of the conference. And uh, Clint told us he's tired and worn out. That's but right. he's pretty happy with the way things have turned out, right? Absolutely. It's been great. We had it was 170 people come both days, and, and on, on Thursday night it was 115 or 20 people, and it was just amazing. I was uh, The thing that always uh, sticks out in my mind, and I guess the one I'm focusing on is this morning in the keynote, uh, Jason Hall, who's our MC, said, anybody else coming next year in every hand? Every hand was raised. I think this is awesome. So. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, tell, let's, let's talk about how we got here. Uh, oh. First, let's back up. You know, let's let's go back a few months, maybe a few years. When did you start using open source software? Um, back in in '98, I guess. Okay. I I started um, at, a, at a little company here, actually called NewSkin. Okay, I heard of that company, right? The NewSkin. Yeah, I actually worked for a sub that? subsidiary. No, I didn't start oh, okay. that. I, that would be nice, right? <laughs> I uh, it was a big planet I actually worked for, which is okay. a subsidiary, and now they've been sucked into NewSkin and part okay. of it. But uh, I I worked for them, and and I started out as a as a technical support guy. Right? Okay. Anybody, everybody starts out a technical support guy. Sure. That was me. So I did that for a little while, and um, then I moved on to better and bigger things, and I did this little programming language called NHTML from Netopia, which is this thing that builds your web pages for you. We were selling sure. web pages. You could build your own. Did that for about six months, and then they moved me over to the Java development team, and that's really where I started getting into open source. And I did Linux, and I really worked with X386 for a long time I would hack my own. I had my favorite window manager was Window Maker back then. Uh -huh. Kind of moved to GNOME now because it's just easier. Uh -huh. But Window Maker is still cool and all the little and and uh, the Nirvana editor and N edit. And that's uh -huh. really where I started getting into it. And cool. they were all converting me over to Linux. They're like, you got to go to Red Hat. I started with Red Hat 4.2. So I mean, 98, 99, somewhere in there. And it was really fun. And, and and so I've been around it what nine years now. Eight, nine years. Yeah. So that's been fun. That. Yeah, that, that's uh, that was awesome. So I, I hear that type of history quite a bit. Yeah, you know, like I got into it, you know, ninety seven, ninety eight, yeah. and uh, uh, those were the, you know, that was when Linux was very, very tinker related. Mm -hmm. you, know, you really had to be a tinkerer to Absolutely. to use it. Um, so tell us about uh, what prompted you to want to do the open source conference, and uh, you know, what was wrong with just you know user group meetings and. I don't think there's anything wrong with user group meetings. In fact, I, I, I want to may have more. That's the whole point, right? Yeah. Uh, Utah Open Source, we, we had a first meeting in, in June of 2006, so a little over a year ago. Uh -huh. Four of us, uh, myself, uh, Alan Young but it goes by Harley Pig, uh, uh, my roommate Chris and, and Jordan Gunderson were there. And in my backyard, we started talking about some of the things that, that were lacking. Uh, centralized calendaring, um, some of the groups we wanted were kind of disparate and needed help and, and needed growth and, and we, we have a strong strong community here and I wanted to be able to say look Utah open source can be more and can help these groups grow and that's really our focus is to help them grow um, with through you know through uh, community through technology you know uh, business and of course education and getting them getting them involved um, so we, we had this little meeting and we started talking about it and and uh, out of it, and I don't know exactly when we decided, but some point along the way, we decided to have the conference, and, and that was actually the launching point of Utah Open Source. So the source. conference wasn't really the uh, initial, no, initial idea. It was yeah, more of let's just have some kind of an organization that ties all the groups together and, and supports them. Right. In fact, uh, previous to um, our group, there was a group called the Utah Open Source Coalition. I don't know if you've heard or of it, the but consortium. Or, yeah, yeah, there was like six different names for right. it, and and the one I picked was Coalition because I couldn't remember them all, mm -hmm. so I I stuck down to one of them. But uh, a bunch of guys got together and they started thinking about similar things that we were trying to do, and and it, it kind of went defunct after a short period of time, like a year or something. Mm -hmm. From what, and there's still a few guys around that want to do it and they're interested in helping, and, and so we kind of tried to get them to help us, and they've been doing it. Jason Hall's a good example. Yeah. So we've had you know a great uh, opportunity to have those guys come in and help us when they can, and and uh, we just need I think more of a driving force, and I think that's really where I fit was be able to say, hey, look, uh, we want to take the the groups further, and we want to get the community going better, and, and along the way it, it it brought technology and it brought business and it and it's going to bring education more. We're doing more with that now too. So so is there anything that surprised you 
as you went out to talk to people and organizations and, and businesses about this conference that was coming up? Was there any, anything in their reaction that surprised you? Uh, at first, it, I, I think the biggest surprise was that the businesses seemed confused as to what we were trying to do. Um, and, then, and then they kind of, uh, as soon as I got to a couple of businesses, uh, specifically, uh, let's see, Guru Labs was a good one, Knowledge Blue, and Iodynamics, which um, they were really on board right at the end, and they just jumped on. As soon as I got a couple, three, I got more, and people were realizing what we were trying to do. And with the conference specifically, that was kind of what we needed, we needed a catalyst. And uh -huh. so that's where I think the conference really brought businesses to help sponsor the groups and get the groups growing, and, and it's going to help the businesses in return and get, the, you know, get them buying things. And, and getting them interested in that sort of stuff, so. Yeah. Okay, let's shift gears a little bit. You are a Fedora ambassador. I am. What does that mean? It means that I, I purport to run Fedora, and I do. Okay. And it means that I want to advocate for it, and that I, and I, I, love, I love open source in that way, and that I want to share uh, distributions of Fedora, tell people about um, all the cool things in, in, in Linux. And in do you think that Fedora's ambassador program is a response to the community efforts of, say, Ubuntu? I don't think it's a response. I think it's just an additional um, option. And, I, and one of the things I think is interesting is the Fedora community has been around a very long time. It's just people don't know about it. Yeah. The advocacy is getting stronger now because of Ubuntu. Ubuntu actually has done a great job to help other distributions. Yeah. And the competition is a great thing. I'm never against anybody else. I'm, in fact, I told, I told Christer Edwards, who's the Ubuntu Utah guy, I said, look, uh, we love Ubuntu Utah, and even in Fedora, and it's, it's the deal is, we like to banter and have that sort of fun, but, you know. But it's all the end, all the end. We're all a big team, and mm -hmm. we just want to have you know open source software everywhere. I would say Linux is Linux is Linux. Yeah, I agree. Okay, well, thanks for talking Thank with us. Thank you very much. Uh, Doran Barton here with Open Source TV, and we've been talking with Clint Savage, the man who single-handedly <laughs> got this whole ball rolling. Thank you. <laughs>